creating the perfect LinkedIn profile to where every recruiter wants to have you. And this is 100% geared towards software engineers. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is Caleb King. I'm a software developer. I've been on LinkedIn for a very, very long time and you might be in two different boats. There are people who looked at LinkedIn and are like, yeah, it's a social media I never use. I don't really touch it and that's fine. Then you have people who are always on LinkedIn. And then you also have this like in-between group. People who update their profiles, but it's really only when they get a job or they have a big announcement or they're trying to get some clout with maybe something they did, an article they just wrote, something like that. What I would tell you is LinkedIn is a gold mine if you're a software engineer. There is so many opportunities on LinkedIn. And if you just have a decent profile, you completely open up all these opportunities for yourself. Whether you're a new developer, maybe you've been in a game for a bit, but this episode is really just gonna go down each section of a LinkedIn profile and things you need to do and things you're probably not doing right now. The reason I wanted to make this episode is far too often people are reaching out to us on People on Tech, which if you have, of course, make sure to check us out over at peopleontech.io. Like, comment, subscribe if you're liking the content we're putting out. That way you can enter to win a $25 Amazon gift card. But like I was saying, LinkedIn to me is just this one place where so many people just disregard, because if you have a job, you're not looking for a job. So you're like, why do I have a LinkedIn? Why, who cares? And then you have the people who are looking for a job, but they don't have a full fledged LinkedIn. Like they don't have anything updated. They don't, and they're like, well, I haven't been working. So what can I put there? This episode is for you. Cause we're going to be diving into each section. And remember the goal is to have a LinkedIn profile that gets you the invitation. 87% of recruiters use LinkedIn to check candidates. So if your LinkedIn profile sucks, your chances of being invited to an interview are pretty low. You could be the best developer in the world, but I guarantee you that Google recruiter, that Facebook recruiter, they're going to go to your LinkedIn and they're going to be like, you're not even a person. I don't know if I should, I don't even know if I should continue because you have so many candidates who want those jobs. So before we dive into it, we need to talk about the mindset shift we need to have. LinkedIn is your friend. It's not a social media platform, it is a tool. That is the first thing I want you to start saying because it's far too often people are like, LinkedIn is just, uh, I use Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Those are all great for entertainment. LinkedIn is the only one where it has a goal in mind for you to get a job, to get in front of recruiters. So let's go down this list of things you need to do. Let's dive into each section. Let's kick us off with the one thing that I think far too often gets overlooked, but it's probably the most important thing, your profile picture. When a recruiter comes to your profile page, it's the first thing that grabs their attention. If it's a weird selfie, a meme, random image, unless you're like a Gary V or Grant Condone, if you're one of those people, sure, maybe you can get away with that. If you're a Kanye West, maybe you can do a blackout image. But on LinkedIn, this is the professional platform. So most recruiters, if you have any of those like weird images, they're just gonna think you're not professional. As simple as that. So here's my advice, three tips to take a good profile picture. Use a high resolution image, use an iPhone, a Pixel, whatever phone is out there. One of your friends I'm sure has the latest phone. Get them, put the phone in portrait mode. Make sure your face takes up at least 60% of the frame. This isn't a group photo. You don't wanna be showing yourself hiking. The focus should be you. You should be the only person in the picture. And if you're curious of Caleb, I'm not really good at taking pictures. Like I said, the best thing I've ever done for people is take my iPhone, put it in portrait mode, put it in studio light. Now I have like that black and white feel and I just take a picture right there. And then if you really are worried about how it looks, just give it to somebody to touch it up. Otherwise, you're probably fine. Which leads into the next point, the background banner. The next thing that grabs recruiters attention is background banner. And the way I look at it, this is your pitch. I mean, you can use a banner to really say like the profile picture is like who I am and a banner is what I do, what I'm good at. So if you go look at my banner, the first thing you see is people in tech, YouTube, podcasts, all of that good stuff. If you're a software developer, you might want to put AWS certified, mean developer, react developer, full stack, something that kind of says like, this is what I like. It was really like your first pitch. Now, if you don't know how to make your background, check out Canva, free options. If you want something fancier than that, let's go on Fiverr and hire somebody. So the next section is the headline. And I have to be honest with you, software engineers get this wrong all the time. They put something like software engineer, developer, future IT specialist, something stupid. And the reason this is a mistake 
you don't tell me who you are or what you do. Now, a bad headline, developer, software engineer. A good headline, senior full stack software engineer, backend developer, Java slash Scala, mobile developer, iOS, Swift. Also, don't write that you're a junior developer. There's literally no benefit of putting that. Most companies are looking for mid-level to senior. The putting junior on is gonna kill most of your opportunities. Also, titles are irrelevant. They're subjective. So you might feel junior or you might be junior in your current job, but you go to the next job, you might be senior. Let them evaluate where they feel you are in your skill set. Now let's go into the about section. The about section is interesting because I only showed you the first three lines and a lot of people, they, they write all these paragraphs and I even had some fun stories and they're like very simple stories. But here's what I've learned and here's my tip for you. It's the first three lines that you have to get right and then you can tell whatever it is you want after that. So what I've learned is LinkedIn only displays those first three lines. So a good example of a good about section because the piece that you'll see before you have to say see more is critical. So something like coding on React, dreaming of React, Helping companies build complex web applications, serving million users with React and modern technologies, skills, React, Redux, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. You could probably fit that entire segment in the very first piece of your about section. And I promise you that will have more engagement and catch people's eyes than any long paragraph that you give them after. Now featured work, that's another section I want to talk about. In the featured section, you should really just place web links to your achievements. So a good example of what to feature, blog posts that got a lot of attention. Maybe you have a hundred plus claps on Medium. Maybe it's something on Reddit. Maybe it's a GitHub profile. Maybe it's a project you're working on. Maybe it's a website you've built. Those are good examples of something to feature. Bad examples, and I've seen people do this. Photo certificate of HTML basics, CSS basics. I went to free Code Academy or Code Camp or one of those guys. Those are good to have, but on LinkedIn, it's not gonna really get you what you're looking for. And if you have nothing, just leave the section blank. Far too often people feel they need to find something to put there and you don't. So let's talk about the experience section. And what I'll tell you is if you don't have a lot of experience, that is okay. If you're beginning your career as a software engineer, then just know you're not gonna have a lot of experience, which means you're gonna have to shine in other areas like your projects, your referrals, your skills, and then really just try and put yourself out there. If you have had a job or two in IT, I say list them as long as they're relevant to what your end career goal is, or if you're just trying to show history. Now, if you're trying to list like every part-time job, I highly recommend not doing that, but jobs that are related to programming, coding, or anything technical, I think you should list. With that being said, most people have crappy experience descriptions. Something like, I worked as a software engineer, developed big applications, then I did code reviews. That's the job of a software engineer, that's not telling me what you did at a particular company. So what I always like to tell people is I like to at least have like a paragraph and I do this for my three most recent jobs. And then anything after three, I really don't care about. But for your most recent jobs, describe, hey, I worked as a software engineer at Google. I worked on a search team. I got to manage three different agile teams. And then here are my three biggest accomplishments. And then boom, boom, boom. That's a little bit more approachable, in my opinion. I've, I, people are gonna tell you, just write down accomplishments and they should be specific smart type goals where it's like, I reduced costs for AWS by 17% or I reduced and measure. And when I see those types of things, I'm like, yes, you went to business school. You're not telling me what you did. Yes, I'm trying to say accomplishments are important. They should be tied into numbers. They should be keywords like reduced, increase, improve, redesign, implement it, integrate it. But remember, these are for people. So if you can't sum it up in a sentence or two, then you're probably making it complicated. Let's talk about the education section. This one's pretty simple. You pretty much list down any of your educational institutions you have graduated from. And then maybe add a sentence or two about accomplishment there. But if you don't attend or you haven't completely completed your education at a certain institution, totally fine to leave the field blank. And some of you are gonna be asking like, Kayla, what about boot camps? And like I said, if it's an educational institution, list it. But this is where boot camps pros and cons. Like some people don't give them the credit that they deserve and other people uh, realize certain boot camps are better than some college programs. It is what it is, but for me, it's very simple. If you don't have a bachelor's or master's or anything like that, then I just say you leave the field blank. Which leads into something very critical, the skills section. Now, 
Here is why I want you to go all out. I want you to list out every technical skill that you have. I also want you to list down variations and here's why. Nowadays, some recruiters use automation tools to speed up the recruitment process. This is why some people you'd be bragging, hey, I get so many recruiters contacting me and they say like, hey, first name, like, come on, get my name right. These recruiters are constantly reaching out to people. And what you wanna do is you want to set up your resume so these automation tools parse your profile, search for specific keywords. And really these bots are gonna be the one that sends you the welcome message. This is why like you get a hundred welcome messages for some people, they're like, man, this person won't stop. Yeah, cause they're using a machine. So tailor your skills and I say use variety. So for example, if you have CSS, write CSS, CSS3, CSS4. If you're a JavaScript, write JavaScript, write JS, write ES6, write ES7, ES8. Literally write down as many keywords that are related to your role. Now don't go crazy and put down things that you don't do. Like don't put down your spreadsheet expert when you haven't touched a Excel spreadsheet in years. Which brings us to the last section, accomplishments. Now in this section, I suggest attaching public accomplishments. Winning a hackathon, school, college projects, boot camp projects, any awards or patents that you have. But just be very clear, like it's uh, an accomplishment that kind of shows you know software development. And again, like be proud of what you put down. Like these are your accomplishments, but I've also seen some people put some things down where you're like, I don't care you won the second grade spelling bee, but it would be cool if you got like employee of the month at your last job, or it was cool that you won this fantasy thing because maybe you're just trying to show like, hey, I like sports outside of that. Use accomplishments sparingly. And remember the whole goal of your LinkedIn is to help get you a job not be nice, not have a cool profile, this is a land job. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's a little bit different, it's not as technical, but I think a lot of you who are watching are trying to land a job at a tech company and one of the things you can do today, if there's anything you can take away from, from this episode is updating your LinkedIn and don't be an asshole to recruiters. Recruiters, yes, they use machines, yes, they use automation, but these people are a lot of times the gate holders. And like tech people, they kind of bounce around to different recruiting companies. So you might have talked to somebody who's recruiting for Google and then two years from now, they're recruiting for Apple. You just don't know. So even when they send you a message and you're not looking, just simply reply, hey, thanks, I'm not looking. Or if you are looking, let them know like this is where I am in the process and have expectations. So I hope this helped. Go update your LinkedIn. If you need a reference, you can go check out my LinkedIn. Be honest with you, like I, I love LinkedIn. It's one of my favorite tools, but that's all I got for you guys. If you have any questions, you know where to find me, but I'm out. Peace.